عبد الله اوكي ويلكم ليديز اند جنتلمان ثانك يو اول فور جوينج اس توداي ماي نيم از عبد الله رفيع اند اي ويل بي يور مودريتور فور ذس ليكشر اون سيكونسينج ذا نيو كابسيد اوف توميتو سبوتد ويز فيروس از ا ستيب توردز اندرستاندينج ذا بينات تريكينج ريزيستنس ان الاباما وي هاف ان اكسايتنج سيشن اهيد اند اي ام ديلايتد تو سي ساش ا فايبرنت اودينس هير بليز جوين مي ان ويلكم اور سبيكر مستر عبد العاشي حتى graduated from the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Egypt in 2016 and was appointed as, as a researcher and teaching assistant, uh, assistant in the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Egypt in 2018. He received an internship for two months uh, at the Department of Cell Biology, Lund University, Sweden, where he was working on gene deletion in Streptomyces benzoate with a group of scientists. He received a corporate admission to pursue his master's in the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology at Auburn University, United States of America. Currently, he is working on plant viruses as, as he is since his undergraduate student. His research involves two important viruses belonging to the Bernabert family, which have, which have some viruses that infect the animals. The first is the tomato spotted wild virus, TSWB, infecting Benoit. And the second is the soybean bean necrosis virus, SBNV, infecting soybean. He is also working on localizing uh, and uh, co localizing the viral proteins in the host plant cell to determine, to, to determine in which spot of the cell each protein is being localized or interacting with which can lead to understanding how the virus function in its host. We will have a devoted uh, questions and answer session at the end. So please save your questions for that time. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Abdel for joining us to, to MGBS, and please start your presentation. Thank you so much, Abdullah, for the uh, for the nice introduction. And I would also like to thank Dr. Ahmed Salam for uh, for hosting me and allowing me to re, uh, to, ser uh, to share my research with you all. And thank you for your attendance today. So I would like to first to mention you that uh, so I'm working on tomato spot oil virus, but if you don't know that, like the virus takes its name by the first plant that was discovered on. So the tomato spot oil virus, I'm, 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 I'm doing the research not on tomato, but we're doing it on peanut. Just wanted to let you know that. So I will be talking to you today about the, uh, the introduction, the hypothesis and objectives of our work and the methods and the results and the discussions and then future steps and acknowledgement. And lastly, we're taking your questions. So as an introduction, um, so peanuts is a big production in the US, especially in our three states, the southern states, Florida and Alabama and uh, and Georgia, because these three states, they plant two to third the total production of the peanut in, in the USA. And uh, in our state, which is Alabama, we um, we uh, we plant a lot of peanut. Like in 2021, they used they published that Alabama only planted and produced 622 million pounds from, from peanut. And if you can see on the map here, this uh, in the south of Alabama, we have the majority of the counties that uh, plant peanut. And these three, like we used, uh, we used the, uh, the counties that produce peanut more for sampling for our study. So as an introduction about the TZWB, this virus belongs to a genus called Orthotus bovirus, and this genus fits in a family called Bonioverde. So I would like you to know that Bonioverde has both viruses that infect plants and animals. So these, and these viruses are very interesting because they can cross kingdoms. For example, for our virus, which we're going to talk about today, the TZWB, it can multiply and replicate in the insect and also replicate and multiply in the plants, which are two different systems. So this family is, is the biggest uh, single strand RNA uh, family. It has over than 350 species. And the virus composed of three segments. It's called tripartite, the small segment, and then the medium segment and uh, the large segment. The first segment with the small, it has two genes or two proteins. The first one is the non-structural silencin protein, which helped the virus to suppress the RNA silencin from the plant, which basically helped the virus to succeed in its uh, infection. And the second gene, which is the nucleocapsid, it's found also on the a, on a, on a S segment. And the nucleocapsid, it's what's given the virus its icosidural shape, as we can see here. And it's also, it's wrapping the RNA of the virus, forming something called the ribonucleocapsid. And then the medium segment, it has three proteins. 
The first one is the non-structure movement protein. And from its, if, from its name, you can tell that it helps the virus to move from cell to another cell using the plasmodesmata, which are like small tunnels that connect the plant cells together. And then the is composed from two protein, the GN and GC, and both of them are very, very helpful and it's essential for the virus to bind with the insects. And lastly, the large segment, which is the carry the polymerase of the virus that help the virus to replicate in its host. So all orthotusable virus viruses are transmitted uh, by thrips and uh, th thrips, they acquire the virus during the larva stage. And this is the life cycle of thrips. They start as any insect as, uh, as eggs, and then they go through two and it starts stages. And I would like to mention that in order for the adults to transmit the virus, they must acquire the virus during the larva stage. And after that, they be paid, and then they emerge as adults, and then the adults can spread and then feed on a healthy plant and then transmit the virus to them during the saliva. So how the virus is actually being um, taken by the insect. So as I mentioned, the adult, uh, the larva must acquire the virus. So the larva would feed on uh, infected plants and then take up the virus when they suck the the, the sap from the plants and then the virus can basically bind with the with the insect salad using the glycoprotein that I mentioned above and then the virus go through the mid gut and in the fore gut and uh, sorry the fore gut first and in the mid the hand gut and in the mid gut and then the virus can circulate the whole system of the insect that's why this virus is transmitted in a persist persistent propagative manner meaning that the virus can multiply and circulate the whole system of the insect and when they emerge as adults and then they feed on a healthy plant, they produce the saliva and then the saliva help the insect to digest the, min the minerals from the plant. And then the virus can use the, the saliva to go through it and then go to a healthy plant. So the virus was first reported on peanut in Texas in 1971. And in Alabama, it was first recorded on peanut in 1988. And then the symptoms of the virus can vary from a host to another. For example, on peanut, you can see it as yellow ring spots, but on like tomato, which is the main host, it, you can see it as necrotic spot. So as I mentioned, this virus is, is very dangerous because it's able to infect more than 1,000 plant species, which is, which is like everything basically we use. And um, that's why this virus is ranked as one of the top 10 viruses worldwide. Also, the virus has a huge distribution. As everywhere except ice like Antarctica. So the virus caused a huge uh, huge yield loss like in uh, like it was estimated worldwide to be millions of um, uh, tens of millions of dollars but in US alone it was estimated to be 1.5 billion billion dollars in 10 year period which is a big number. So why we did this study is because uh, when the virus was first discovered, the peanut breeders, they bred for resistant cultivars and were used them for a long time. But recently, these lines or these cultivars that were once resistant are showing uh, increasing in the incidence and the symptoms of the virus in the field. So we wanted to do this study so we can understand why the virus is showing more symptoms or basically why the virus is breaking the resistance of peanut. That's why we did this study. And our hypothesis is that maybe the mutations in the genome of TZBOV is the reason that it's pushing the emergence of a new strain that are able to break the resistance of the peanut. Therefore, our objective in this study is to detect these mutations in the genome of TZBOV. And we started by localizing, sorry, by utilizing the nucleocapsid, which is found on the S segment. And why we started with the nucleocapsid is because it, it is the most sequenced gene on the NCBI. Therefore, it has a lot of data available, which means that once we get our sequences, we can find something to compare with, and then it will help us to understand our data better. So the method that we followed in this study is that we collected 115 peanut samples from three, three locations, as we can see here in Alabama map. And as I mentioned before, the, th the south of Alabama is planting and producing the majority of the peanut. That's why we covered it for the sampling. We used the first location was BRU, which stands for Bruton Agriculture Research Unit, which can be found here. And the second location was the Watergrass Research and Extension Center, stands for WGREC. And this was uh, here. And then the last location was Gulf Coast Research and Extension Center, the GCREC, and it was here. 
So we collected all the samples, as you can see here, and then the samples were carried to the lab, and then the total RNA was extracted, and then the cDNA was made using specific primers. After that, the nucleocapsid was amplified using specific primers, and after that, we cloned them in PJET, only the positive samples. We cloned them in PJET, and then we sent two different plasmid from each sample for sequencing, and then the reason we did that is that we wanted to at least get one complete end from each sample. So the the sequences were received and then they were analyzed using the PLOS and then they were converted to a protein. And then the protein helped us to make the alignment so we can detect the changes in the genome of the nucleocapsid. After that, at a final step, we constructed the phylogenetic tree that can show us the likelihood or the similarities between Alabama strain and the strain that are available on the NCPI. So this table is very important because it shows the cultivar that we use for sampling and all the lines or the cultivar that are listed in red colors are come from the peanut RX guide. So the peanut RX guide is basically the official institute in the US that is res responsible for producing and breeding peanut cultivars that are resistant to multiple diseases, including the DSWV. So the farmers would usually use this guide so they can choose the best cultivar that they need for their farm. So we call, we assembled all these lines from the three locations as mentioned above, and all the lines that are in black, they are not released lines yet. They're still under testing, but they did not release them yet as resistance. I just want to tell you like we sample resistance and non-resistant cultivars in this study. So as a result, we were able to detect 89 samples positive out of 115 from uh from the samples which is a big big number as you can see here here are like the amplification of the nucleocapsid so after we sent them for sequencing and then we did the alignment we received 140 complete sequence out of 81 out of 89 and then the reason we got this big number is because as i mentioned we sent two colonies from each sample for sequencing and in so many cases we got something called a mix mixed infection which basically means that within the same plant you can you can you can identify more than one strain of the virus. So this can tell us how badly these lines are doing. And if we went back to the table here, these numbers on the, on the right refers to how many samples were tested positive out of how many collected. For example, the top uh, 297, there were three samples positive out of four. So you can tell based on these numbers that these lines are not actually resistant. They are very susceptible. In some cases, you can tell like in Georgia O6G, it's very well known for its resistance to CLV, but in the three location, it's always three out of four, three out of four, three out of four. And this one, this line also, which is JE12Y, it's also doing very bad. It's seven out of eight. So the alignment that will allow us to see and detect the mutations in the genome of the nucleocapsid showed us that we have seven conservative mutations only in the nucleocapsid. As you can see here in this table, this is the reference genome of the nucleocapsid, and this is the genome, the, the nucleocapsid that represents Alabama. And here are the sites of the mutations. For example, the first mutation was observed in the in site 42, where the amino acid I changed it to L. And in the a, in a site 50, the I, the amino acid I changed it to V, and so on. So how many samples show this change? All, all, and all, and all, except this one. So you can tell that the 140 nucleocapsid that were sequenced from Alabama, they show seven conservative mutations in its genome. And we think that those mutations are one of the reason, of course, not the only reason, actually one of the reasons that are responsible for the breaking uh, resistant properties for this virus. So when we constructed the phylogenetic tree, we were able to see that the majority of Alabama strain, which you can see here, BRU, and then the WGRIC and then the GCRIC are actually forming their own nice clades together. But in a comparison with the other references on NCPI, the Alabama strain are very similar or actually sharing the same roots with Georgia strains, which makes sense because if you can look in the map here, Georgia is all here. So it's our neighboring stra uh, state, which makes sense that our sequences are very similar with its sequences. So we were also able to see three interests in subclades, the subclade A and B and C. And in the subclade A, we were able to see mixed mixing of sequences from the from everything, from the three locations from Alabama and from North Carolina and Georgia and Asia. 
which suggests that Tears of Wabin, Alabama is variable and it's not coming from one source. We actually have more than uh, more variability of that Tears of Wabin, Alabama. And in a group B and C, it is confirming and um, uh, indicating the hypothesis that Tears of Wabin, Alabama is very similar to Georgia because it's only similar and matching here with Georgia strain and also Georgia strain. Here you can see the three the three location of Alabama with Georgia, and in here you can see two from the three from three locations with Georgia. So to further um, discuss that, the yield loss of TW was estimated to be about forty million dollars in Georgia in two years, uh, actually not in ten and and from the nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety seven. And to combat these low, uh, the yield loss, the peanut breeders they bred for resistant cultivars. And as I mentioned, they've been using these lines for a long time. But in the recent year, these lines witnessed uh, uh, increasing in the symptoms of the TWV and the incidence in the field. So we wanted to understand uh, this phenomenon. That's why we started doing that. We thought like maybe the mutation in the gene of TWV is one of the reasons that can push the emergence of a new strain that are able to break the resistance of the peanut. And that's what we found. Our results found that we have 89 samples out of 115 collected and then the majority, actually all the lines that were sampled, they were all uh, positive for the virus. And the line that are rested on a peanut RX guide as resistance are not even resistant. They are very susceptible. And our phylogenetic tree showed us the uh, that the majority of these LV in Alabama is very similar to Georgia. And we can explain that by, as I said, it's our neighboring strain, uh, sorry, our neighboring uh, state. And we can actually uh, explain that by as I mentioned, the virus is able to infect over one over than 1,000 plant species, which means that the virus can be jumping from plant to another plant between the two states and spread easily. That's why sequences from Alabama were very similar to sequences from Georgia. And also, the virus is getting some advantage being transmitted and vectored by thrips, which is the main vector. And thrips, they have so, so many species, and also they can because they are very tiny, they can be carried by like wind or hurricanes. They can also be flying from field to another field until they spread the virus between the two states. So our findings will like help the uh, the peanut breeders to breed for uh, for like future lines that can resist the virus better in the future. So the future work now is that we are interested to know the three subclades here and what what is the very unique like what are the mutations that is very unique to them that makes them subclade with each other so a routine alignment for for each subclade was made to see the unique changes between them and then a final one sample was chosen from each sample from each uh, subclade to represent its clade for example from group a we showed that t is above bru 20, uh, 25 and from group b we chose the uh, the wire uh, the GC rec 45, and from group C we chose the WG rec 5. So, in a comparison with the reference genome, we found that it's it has two RNA binding regions, and we wanted to see if our three uh, strain that we chose have any mutation that locate in the RNA binding regions. So, the, in a group A, the BRU25, it has one amino acid mutation, which is S to change it to N in the in the side 10, and this mutation is located in uh, in the first RNA binding region. But the other two strains are having a mutation that are located in the core of the nucleocapsid. So why we're doing that is that we want to understand and see if these mutations would change the localization of the virus in the plant cells. And that's what we're doing like nowadays. So the three location will basically be uh, prepared until they be moved to, uh, we tag them, uh, each construct was uh, was like PSI was PSI GFB, and then we infiltrate them at this process. Uh, sorry, at this protocol that's mentioned here, it's called the initial infiltration assay, where you basically infiltrate the virus in the plant cells, and then after two days you take pictures, and then if the virus, uh, if, if the protein is being expressed, it should be glowing under the microscope because it's uh, marked or attached to a GFB fluorescent. So. Um, we will see if this this we didn't do the this you know like last week i just moved the the all the construct in the in the gfp and then this week i will be infiltrating these uh, uh this construct in the plant cells using the cucina benchimiana which is the plant model that we use in our lab after that pictures will be taken and then if we see if these mutation will change the localization of the nucleocapsid of course in a comparison with the reference genome that we also have in our lab 
So why we're doing this? Because this is going to help us like the infection, if this is going to change the infection or not. And it will also indicate if these mutations uh, are one of the reasons that, uh, that make the virus able to break the resistance of peanut. Also, as I mentioned, we only started with an eclocapsid. I just want to bring this. Yes, yeah, so we only started with an eclocapsid here. But what about the rest of the genome? Actually, we are interested to know if also the rest of the genome has mutations or not. And if you ask me for my own opinion, I would think that we have a lot of mutations because we only start with a nuclear capsid, which is the smallest gene. It's all it's only 774 amino acid, sorry, base bear, which is uh, which is 285 amino acid and the smallest in the virus genome. So we are sending the, the virus uh, for full gene sequencing through the aluminum ISEC instrument offered by North Carolina and North Carolina State University. And why? Because, as I mentioned, we want to detect the other mutations in the, in the genome of the virus. So this is just to say that, that this, the, the, this work was presented first at the Peanut pre show and also in the Symposium at Auburn University. And very recently, last week, was presented at the American Society of Virology. And also, right now, we're working on a paper that addressed this work. I'm very excited for this paper. And these are the references that were used in this study. And I would also like to thank the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology for providing a uh, fund for this work, and also the National Peanut Board, and uh, for also for Dr. Martins, uh, she's my PI, and uh, I thank her so much for her supervision, and for uh, the graduate students, Alec uh, Mayfield and uh, Wilson Clark, also the undergrads, and Asma, Asma Sharma, she's uh, our PhD student that sh just joined our lab, and I also would like to thank uh, the undergraduate students, um, uh, Rachel and uh, Alex uh, Reyes and uh, Nick. I would like to thank everyone actually uh, for helping me out. And uh, thank you so much for your attendance and I'm ready for your questions. You can actually raise your hand if you have any questions or you can type your question in the chat uh, and I can read it or the uh, Abdullah can read the question for me. Thank you so much and I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, sir, for your informative uh, lecture. Thank you, Amdan. Uh, our audience, please don't hesitate to write your questions in chat room uh, or raise your hand, uh, and I will uh, love your mic to speak. Do we have any question, Abdullah? Or not yet? Okay. I see something in the chat. No, that's just the, the link that you share. Again, if you have any question, just raise your hand or type your question in the chat and I can read it. So I have a question from Wilson. He's saying how old are some of these peanut lines? So these, uh, okay, that's the next question. I would like to go back to the, to the table so I can show you. So this table that showed the lines, yes, this, so it refers here like to the year. Like for example, Georgia 06 was actually bred in 2006. And uh, and like Georgia 14 is like 2014, 2012, 2018. So you can tell like the year that the the the, the line was uh, was made. This is like 2009. Hope this answers your question. So they are not like made in one year. It's like multiple generations, multiple years. So I have another question. Yes, as, uh, so the question says, if there is, uh, is there any biological control agent to control this TS, um, TS, you mean TSWV virus? So, so for plant viruses, usually to uh, to manage them, it's like the the first step is to actually uh, manage the insects, which 
help the virus to uh, to be transmitted, and it's the most effective method that can be used against plant viruses. So yeah, like managing the threats in this case would be one of the main factors that will actually reduce the virus in the field. We have another question. I, I, have, I have other questions. Okay. Question. You can ask, is it your question? Yeah. Okay. You can have uh, in a cultivar bread for resistance being used to manage ESOB in the field. Uh, can you explain it? Um, in, the, in the field, the uh, the plant can have a resistance for uh, for for this virus. Yes, that's uh, yeah. That's why these. Lines, yes, of course. Like that's why these lines were once resistance. Like when they bred for that, when they bred these lines, they were like once resistance. That's why they used them for a long time. But recently, these lines are not doing very well, as we showed in this study. So, yeah. Also, like answer the question that was before that one for the biological control. I said like you first manage the insects. And the second, you can also breed for resistance. These are like the two main effective methods for managing plant viruses. So these signs were once resistant, but now um, like the virus is breaking the resistance. And as we show in this first step to understand this phenomenon, it, that the, the nucleocapsid of this virus has so many mutations that could help the uh, the virus to break the resistance of these bean nut. Yeah. There is another yeah. question from Dr. Martin. Yes. Uh, Okay, I think Dr. Martin answered the, the, your question. Dr. Martin is yeah. my, 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 yeah, bread lines are the primary source of management along with chemical control for the insect. However, in recent years, the virus is, is now able to show symptoms more so than ever before. Yeah, thanks. If there are any questions? Can wait also. Not yet. Not yet. No other questions here. Do you see someone raising their hands? I don't see. I don't see. Can you write to Dr. Abdal uh, your email in chat? Because uh, you want. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, I'll send my email to everyone. So this is my email. You can email me uh, like asking about any questions and I will uh, be happy to answer your questions. And I think this is it, Abdu. Thank you so much for hosting me and thank thank you uh, for everyone who attended this lecture. And thank you for your question too. Thank you, Abdu. See you other lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you for your uh, for uh, your kind feedback. To stay updated uh, on the upcoming lectures for MGBS, please continue to follow our websites.